I think that's basically it. Oh, but then there's Modern Warfare 2, of course. Which is one of the more later games, uh, probably the latest game, to generate a lot of controversy. Because there was a part in the game where you're a terrorist in an airport, basically mowing people down. And um, it's... I know it's actually very possible. You don't have to do anything. You just need to watch. Well, sure. I mean, I am actually not passing judgment on it. I'm just, you know, it's just, definitely. It's just, no, it's, just a, it's just something I know. Yeah. Do they shoot you afterwards anyway? Yes, they oh, do. Okay. You get, it because it you're an undercover agent. Yeah. It definitely is, it, but it definitely, you know, fair or not, right or not, it definitely was, objectively speaking, a game that caused a controversy. There was definitely a lot of controversy over this. And in fact, so much to the point that they had anticipated it, and in fact, this mission, you're given an option not to even do it. It's kind of like, this is the controversial mission. Do you want to not do it so you won't be offended? And um, of course, you know, it's like, yeah, I can't imagine who would have said no. But um, I, think that's, I think that's it. So, so um, when we go further now, um, I will give a, a short introduction. So the question is now, violence games come up, and since a certain moment in time, this year, this year happened, was really shocking. And this machine here with Mortal Kombat um, caused enormous troubles. Um, so two senators, as Matt was already mentioning, um, came up um, in Senate and said that whether the game industry comes up with a solution for that problem or the government will. So, and, and that was pretty interesting because suddenly everybody was a bit panicking around that. And it was not so much about the discussion what in Mortal Kombat is the problem. And in, back in the days, there was no research going on on the effects of violence in games. It was really a political decision. And um, that's something that I struggle a lot with um, now working also for, for the European rating system, is that it's often mixed political issues with ethical issues and then science issues, you know, and you never know who's talking about what. So, um, so what happened after that problem came up in 1993 is first Sega had an interesting idea. They quickly came out with a solution. They had three rating systems, general audiences, 13 plus and 17 plus. <coughs> and what the interesting thing is they did the mistake they were the first ones, so you can imagine. So um, the first idea was, wow, Sega is doing this so they don't have to censor the games anymore. And that's almost true, because before that, Sega was censoring games, but now they didn't do that anymore, they just put the age rating on that, and then that mean, meant they didn't have to take it out. Um, another problem that came up was, um, <laughs> it was never clear how they do the rating. Like, they did the rating, but nobody ever knew why a game got in, like this rating or another one. Like, it was totally unclear. And um, there were a lot of problems, there were inconsequences. Like sometimes you would even, like there were scenes of rape or racism in games that got general audience. And, and then when the question came up, why? Sega couldn't answer that. Um, so um, after the first critics came up, the next system was a 3DO rating system. And pretty much sticking to the similar way, um, what they did is they also give this description of contents. Uh, does anybody remember that? It was pretty hard for me to find any games ever. So that, that thing, for instance, existed like almost just for a year. And um, then the third version came up um, from the RSCS, uh, um, C, C, um, also with three categories and four levels. This one was the first one that made everybody happy, but they just made it for PC games. And they were not ready to do it for any console games. So um, who was the winner of the whole problem? Mm -hmm these guys here. So in 1994, Entertainment Software Rating Board came up with a new solution, and this the solution we still have in America so far. Um, so first of all, it was self-regulatory, which is very important, because in Europe, that wasn't the case. In Europe, the governments made that decisions. Um, in America, it was um, self-regulated by the industry, and it was about content rating. And um, yeah, they kind of like, in, in the beginning, they had more early childhood kids, kids and adult, teens, major and um, adults. And they changed it a bit over the years, but not a lot has changed. So it's pretty much the same as it always was. So what are the rating systems? Uh, Matt just said he hardly has ever seen this one. So the first one is early childhood. The second one is E for everyone. The third one is 10 plus. 
so it may contain you know, cartoon fantasy violence language and so on um, and as you will see or uh, it's most of the part it's about the form of realism of the graphics and the form of the violence is it more cartoony or more realistic which is mainly the way how they rate that and by the way it's very hard on scientific level to show that this is the case you know um, even the studies that claim that they found a solution to that are, s are studies where we can discuss about them but still it is like the major uh, metrics to read that um, then there is the team and major audiences and last but not least the real bad ones um, and we were just discussing, Matt thought there was never a game, um, I, I was reading there were eight games that got that rating, because if you get that rating, you don't see these games in shops anyway anymore, so that's the reason why we hardly ever see them. Um, may I just ask before I go on to the European system, because here we are, have a lot of Americans, did a lot of you have problems back in the days getting a certain game that you wanted to have if it had a rating? Yeah? I never, I never had a problem, but I did get asked for my driver's license when I bought Diablo 2. Yeah, which is kind of sad. I got asked for my ID to buy ragdoll food. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I know the only time I remember it happening was years ago getting I for my birth for my brother's birthday I got like Conker's Bad for a day and the and, and the guy basically said, You do know this is that this is for 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 adults and he was older older than me, so it was yeah. in college, so it was a fun so it was just the warning, basically. I have a question. No, this isn't. Yeah. And maybe you'll go in. Do you know who funds the ESRB? Like, where does their money come from? And normally, um, that's a good question. I, I, do you know in America? I know in Europe, but. In America, you have the uh, video game companies pay 10,000 bucks a pop. I mean, depending on to have their games get rated. Yeah. At least that was how much it was of the last time I was arranging to send. Um, the ESR packet because you actually have said this. You said not just your game, but a vast pile of support yeah. evidence. But it was, it was about ten thousand dollars. We were trying to make very, very sure that we included everything they needed. <laughs> we had checked off every box. And you could certainly choose not to get rated, I suppose. But then you would probably have a hard time getting on the platforms, right? Like I, I imagine Sony and Microsoft are saying you need to be rated if you're gonna. Well, but if, if you don't go through the rating system, they pretty much assume that you hit. If they don't rate you lower. Then you must clearly be yeah. on the, whatever the highest rating is. Well, what about for like some of these smaller studios who can't afford the ten thousand dollars? That's a major problem it, now. It, yeah, it's possible that they have. I was working at what was essentially a studio owned by a major publisher. Okay. It's possible they have some sliding scale for smaller games, but I actually don't know. I, I can only tell you what what I know the, the amount being managed about was for yeah. us. I just wanted to clarify. So you said that that the research on this has shown that there's no difference in uh, cartoon violence versus realistic violence in terms of no, how it affects I think, you? I would say the only or research ever done was kind of like focusing on the question. You know, that so there was never a research proof or there was no research question where they said, oh, um, does it have an effect or not? Mostly to try to s show that there is an effect. But there were like four to five studies and all of them are, are critical. You know, like there are none of these are really convincing to me. Which yeah. are you talking about? Because hmm? I mean, the the senators didn't really care, yeah. but I mean, there was research. I mean, Bushman and Anderson were doing yeah. research in the 80s, exactly. and they will still claim that but they have found measurable effects. That's very interesting because, for instance, they developed the general aggression model, mm -hmm. and they say they talk about aggression, you yeah. know, and it's and there is never discussion. So, what's the difference between aggression and violence, for instance? You know, that's like that's well, not aggressive thoughts and then aggressive actions. Exactly. You can only measure thoughts. Because of course. How do you measure? Do a test for action. It doesn't pass the IMD. And if, <laughs> it's interesting, they always f try to find methods how to use uh, like aggression or violence, but sometimes they would use like candies, you know, you can give a candy to somebody after playing a game or not. But you know, like if you look at the studies, you realize it's, it's a very far way from, from the real problem to the research methods. Well, also, the, um, and maybe this is a study you were thinking of, and I don't know the study, but I remember um, once hearing about that there was some confusion, or at least some people thought, who were criticizing the study between violence and violent play, or, or aggression and aggressive play. So like if they give a, a kid, after they play a game, something and they hit it on something, they're like, oh, that's violence, and it's kind of like, but it could be violent 
play as opposed to I think I'm really killing something. So there are no longitude studies, like that doesn't exist because it was like back in the days not even possible and most of the time the games die anyway. There are short term studies and mostly it's about 10 minutes gameplay and then a quick test. You know, but there, so there are, there are results, but uh, me being an advisor in the scientific board, um, I read them and I say, that, well, it's interesting, but it's not enough evidence for me to now say, okay, that's clear. Comic violence is more of a problem than, or less of a problem than realistic violence. Like, I don't get enough evidence. That's, that's what I would say right now, so far. So nothing conclusive. Yeah. And I find it funny, but we will get into that anyway. The question is, who are we protecting here anyway? Is it the kids, or is it the parents, or the society, or our values? You know, like... And when you when we are having this discussion in, in uh, like for, for the European system, it's always in the end we always come up with this like somebody says, but that's the value of a European community country. We don't want our kids to play games with realistic violence. And then and that that's it. You know, that's mostly the end of the discussion here. Um, which is a problem, I think. You know, be, but that's something we, we would like to discuss anyway later and playing some games and discussing that. So um, if we go further, um, so this is the system that I kind of like um, work with. That's the European system. Interesting part for me about that is that all the countries had their own ones and it was always from the government. So you can imagine suddenly the industry said, we have a solution for you. And like almost every country was like, oh no, you know, like, now the industry does it, something horrible. The only country yet not joining Peggy in Europe is Germany. They still have the USK, which is one of the strictest ones, but I will also talk about a big problem they have. So it's pretty much um, in the same system as the American one. Um, what is a bit different in this respect, and, and what we just came up with, it's also about 10,000 um, um, euros, and they have a solution for smaller companies, but it's still about two to $3,000, which means if you make, for instance, an iPhone game, it might mean that you would have to pay two or $3,000 for the age rating. And you can imagine there are companies out there that would not be willing to do that. And that's one of the biggest problems Piggy has now. They, they say, what about all these small games out there? We should rate them. They, they, don't want to, they don't want to be rated, and we don't know how to do that. We don't know how we can cope that problem. And that's their main problem at the moment. They were like, how can we cope with all these thousands of small internet games popping up um, we have no control anymore. Um, they have a bit of a different system. Um, these are the age ratings. And it's also very interesting. So I, I, I worked with a child developmental model. And you can imagine between 7 and 12, a lot is happening. Like, <laughs> it's interesting that they don't have something in between. But anyway, like child de de developmental um, um, arguments are not very important in that issue, which is completely weird, because it should be. And, um, but they also have like these indicators. So this is violence, this language, <laughs> that's fear. Spider. That's sex, drugs, um, discrimination, gambling, and internet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I missed what the I missed what the spider is. That just scary things. Yeah. No, but it's scary like um, um, scary topics at all. Like any scary aspect in the game. So it doesn't mean. Yeah. Means there's an online yeah. Game. A big big problem now because that means the moment you have an online aspect in your game, you get a 12 plus, no matter what the game is about, because they're very afraid of naked old men going in chat rooms and. Sorry, with a with a scary label. Yeah. So so you said that it says scary topics too. So what what defines scariness? Does it yeah. mean like survival horror or like? Um, yeah, and um, it, it's interesting because horror, for instance, is, is a problem. Horror would get one, yes. Um, but also we will go through them anyway. We will now um, focus on violence. But they they have. I think if you have a scary topic, and also if they're like if it could harm a kid in 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 a scary way. Whatever that means. Can you give an example? Um, ghosts, for instance. When you say, when you say ghost apartment. stories, talking about ghosts, but not actually showing them. But now, that's exactly the problem. You know, now they would play the game and go through it, and then they have a, a system. And the, and the company would say, we have something scary inside that we think is really important to tell the audience. Yeah. When you say scary, um, hurt somebody in a scary way, you mean, um, you mean like they would have nightmares? It's... Um, yeah, like the moment you have violence in it, it's in the violence area. 
but it's more like um, topics that could be dangerous, characters that, that could frighten kids. Um, so frighten people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, two, two things. One, I think I've read about this with the Peggy system. Don't the ch ages actually change a little bit in certain countries? Like I've seen some yeah. European, mm -hmm. like I've seen some European ones for, for like from Britain, and they're yeah. always Peggy fifteen and not yeah. sixteen. Exactly. No, we will go. We will. Oh, there, is, there is even a better version I would like to show you. Well, the, the other question was that, that discrimination. Yeah. <laughs> what game? I I can't think of a game that would have that sort of. I think it would be perfect for the political um, version in two weeks to get into discrimination yeah. too, because it's really uh, yeah, Resident oh. Evil or any of the any of the Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto is also yeah. totally yeah. there. There's a lot of, of, of racial slurs and whatnot going yeah. around. In fact, yeah. Grand Theft Auto got in Grand Theft Auto Vice City got in trouble because there's a Haitian gang that you're supposed to kill, and there's a line in the game that says "Kill the Haitians," and they got into a lot of trouble it. for that. So we that. So, so we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I hope that works. On Wikipedia, they have a really funny. That's right. Does it work? There's racism in the game. So this here, this here is the funniest thing I've seen in my area ever. So these are the countries and the age rating. So you, you know, so you see the green is like the the child version. It just shows how ridiculous the whole thing is, in the sense of, you know, so, so some people would go for the three, some have the seven, like, it's really interesting that, you know, like, there is no scientific evidence which age to go for. Like, there is no reason to say, um, this has to be 12, you know. Some people go to, some countries go to 13, and, um, and some even, okay, that's even, that's the wildest one ever. So it's very interesting to, to look at the different age ratings and discuss with them how they came up with. And most of the times they're related to film, like to, to ratings in film. Um, or they just try to use something that is, uh, is useful for the industry to sell products. So they would say, um, that we have kids' products and we have teens' products. And it doesn't matter to us if a kid is starting with six or seven. And um, it kind of like shows how... how um, how relative the whole um, rating system in different countries are. But does that, I mean, to some extent, does it really matter? If I have my award game, it may say for ages six and up. Yeah. And I'll look at that and I'll say, oh, well, my 10 year old probably won't like that because yeah. it'll be really boring, but my five year old can probably handle it. Yeah. I mean, presumably, if you're actually having a parental oversight, th that number is still useful, regardless of what label they put on the number. Um, whoopsie. I think that. The major problem about that is that you're not talking about an adult that knows about games and knows how to and knows what game would be appropriate for their, their kids. Well, except I mean, just, again, I, I I think that it's still better than useless. Yeah. Here, it's just a low bar, I suppose. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but if it says you know ages 12 and up, and I think about that, I think well, my channel is actually pretty mature. I'll, I'll I'll let him play. Yeah. I mean I mean. Even if I don't know anything about games, as long as that 12 is, you know, within a year or two, I, yeah. I'm satisfied, yeah. probably. Um, well, also, there's, there's, you don't know whether the 12 and up, or at least one of the ambiguities is, it, it's sort of unclear whether it refers to developmentally appropriate or morally dangerous, yeah. or both. You know, because you could have a game that it's okay for a six-year-old to play, but they wouldn't be able to understand what's going on in it, sure. um, you know, versus, you know, the other way yep. around. So, but I think that's one of the ambiguities that you'll be yes. talking about. So, um, so if we take a look at, for example, violence. So what I did. Um, wait, one second. Uh -huh. <laughs> I will hand out uh, that this is this is the review that the industry gets if they do the age rating. So this is exactly the paper they get. And um, I think I'm allowed to hand that out. So um, <laughs> if not, we cut that out. Um, but just look look through that. Like, if you would be a publisher and design a game, you would get this. Go through the categories and decide which which would be appropriate for your game. And um, I just took an, as an example the violence aspect, and I would just go through quickly. But it just <coughs> I find it really amusing. Um, so how does it work? So normally it's about um, first of all. Um, you get a three plus if there is any cartoon, slapstick, or child-like setting, and in in direction of violence, but um, and it could be maybe 
like you see, this is very interesting for me. So, um, if the violence is in a cartoon way without harming anybody, and there is no direct violence against another person, you get a three plus. Um, if it could be possibly upsetting, whatever that means, um, you can get a seven plus. And uh, and then they, you see a certain pattern going through all of these, where it's pretty much about um, non-realistic violence with a seven plus. And the more realistic the violence gets, like the older the age rating system gets. So, and if we have some examples here, um, for instance, NFL Madden gets a three plus. You know, um, so tackling someone is just fine. Uh, wait, excuse me. So tackling someone. Yeah, um, it's it, it, uh, that's really strange. We will. I, I will show you another example that is even stranger. Little Big Planet gets a seven plus. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this one here gets a 12 plus, because you have cartoon violence uh, against a character that, with cartoon, you know. But that's so they look really at the game content and see is the is the um, description are the pictures um, is there any violence included and is it realistic or cartoony? And now we're getting serious. Yeah. Ah. Clear. Now we're talking about blood. Um, death and injury, human like. This is the 16 plus. And really interesting now gets this here. This here is all 18 plus. What I find very funny a classical 16 plus is NHL. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Abe, hey, you, you played that. Why, is it, why did you get a 16? Well, there, there's fighting. There's, there's, there's a fighting game inside. Yeah. Fighting yeah. Game I find it very interesting, so NHL gets a 3+, plus, but in this game you can do a fight, you cannot do it in NFL. Wait, but do you think hockey players punching each other is more violent than football players tackling each other? I know, it's less violent. But, uh, but I think, but, but I think, I think it's the acceptance of the violence, right? Because yeah. most people who aren't fans of hockey would be like, well, why the heck do they fight? That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And NH NFL, excuse me, like professional American football, it, they are proud of how violent a sport it is, but, but people who are fans of football love the violence but don't think there's anything wrong with it because we have such a long-standing accepted tradition of playing football think, and have playing a violent sport. Well, right? I, th I, I can honestly see part, part, part sure, because right. really the violence, I think one, one argument that could be made is like in, in the NFL, the violence is more of a natural part of the game, but a fight, but a fight is not except, while it does usually happen in an a NHL game, yeah. it's not, it, it, it's not a it's not a normal part of the regular gameplay. If one of the players would get nose bleeding in NFL, it would automatically be the 16 plus, ah. like without discussion. The moment when there's blood included, and um, and you know what I find very interesting is that the age rating systems f try to find a very objective way to measure that, so they don't have to discuss it. It's strange that they didn't pick up on the injury to human life. Yeah. Uh, NFL, right? Because yeah. people can have broken yeah, wings and stuff like that. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Halfway through your game, it says you stop. There's an injury on the field. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Exactly. Look at it and you all close another person holding their knee and they get carried off on a stretcher. And except the game and it says injury. and it says that right there. Except arcade style or sporting action. Ah. Right. Yeah. I, think a, I do think there's an important piece of data missing in this, which is the sales numbers in Europe of NFL, NHL, and then you and I also looked at FIFA because yeah. FIFA yep. gets what three plus. Three plus. So yeah, so if the game sells. A lot, somebody and, it, FIFA and, and you can, yeah, you can I get mean, injured people and you know cause all kinds I of violence. That's sporting, that so. sporting action yeah. exception is is almost certainly yeah. geared to all to all the FIFA games. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure the game where you play the FIFA fan is 18 plus. <laughs> 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 that might be true. <laughs>